MMA fighter, Jeslyn Michelle, is here. And this is so awesome. And she's also, not only is she a talented MMA fighter, but she's also a professional wrestler. And as a professional wrestler, you are? Desiderata. Desi Dorada. Desi for short. Hi. Yeah. Yes. And look at that. She's in the outdoors. Now, are you in are you in beautiful Las Vegas? Beautiful California? Where are you? Beautiful Las Vegas. And the weather is perfect. This is the time of year. It's my favorite because it's like 70 degrees. And it's the oh, the wind is blowing cool. The sun is just hot enough. It's just the perfect time of year every year. And then it turns to misery. That summertime humidity. That dry heat. Now, in South Florida, we get that humidity. But I've been to Vegas. You all get that dry heat. I remember walking around Vegas, and they actually had little, like, sprinklers up above as you walk around just to try to cool people off. Yes. Yeah, or it's like being in a beef jerky dehydrator. You'll just shrivel up from the inside out. I would now, much rather be in a sauna in Florida, like Florida, than a beef jerky dehydrator. Well, I was going to that's interesting because – as a fighter and you're in training, does that weather help when you're outdoors or it doesn't matter? I mean, I think it, I think it makes you a little more able to endure the elements, just a little tougher. Just if you can do any kind of exercise and feel that 115 degree dry heat in your lungs, then you could probably do a lot of things. And speaking of a lot of things, you do do a lot of things. <laughs> so multitasking, it's amazing. So MMA fighter, professional wrestler, also an actor, entertainer, and my favorite, stilt walker. Well, how'd you find that? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of under the same umbrella is what I always say. So... Um, I never want it to be one dimensional, but this is all under the umbrella of entertainment. I would, I would say I, I'm a performer entertainer at, at birth by heart. That's just where my passion is. But I grew up an athlete because my dad loved sports. So I did in the mountains, climb trees, swim in the rivers and do sports. And so I, um, I realized I didn't like the competition so much, but I loved that I was entertaining people. Junior Olympian. We're talking high quality young athlete at that level. <laughs> yeah. We had a high altitude training. What's your thoughts of whether it be in track and field or other sports? Was it something as a young athlete – trying to become an Olympian? You know, as a young athlete, I didn't really think that far ahead into the future. It was just just the normal thing to do. Um, but in high school, I played basketball. Well, in middle school, I played on the boys' team. In high school, I played varsity. I thought I was going to be the first girl in the NBA. I truly thought I'd be the first. And then um, by a series of strange events that I call fate – my senior year, I did a play and I took a different route and all the, the college searching and the, the scholarship seeking just fell by the wayside and my entire life changed. Like I, I could have gone to college and played basketball and I don't think I'd be right here if I did that. You mentioned being in a play. Okay. So what play was it and what part did you play? Oh my gosh. I have done local theater. So that's kind of where I, where I went, right? After high school, I went back to snowboarding. I love being in the mountains. I love snowboarding. I taught snowboarding for numerous seasons. And I did local theater there. Um, we did On Golden Pond. We did, um, gosh, what is the name of that silly play? Nothing, nothing, nothing too popular. Just kind of like obscure older plays. Um, but that actually got me into uh, TV commercials, and then I did some modeling, and that got me into independent films. And there's some 
little low budget films that are out there that I got to participate in. I love being on set, like being on a movie set. is just exciting to me. And I think I'm a great actor. <laughs> Would you ever consider getting behind the camera? Yes. Yes. I, I think I'm an excellent director as well because I'm good at being clear with direction. So I think, I think eventually I'm not a very good writer. I don't think I would have a movie or story that I'd know to make. What I did it? go. Oh, go ahead. I, I did try to make a documentary on a cross country road trip once, but that's still somewhere on a hard drive, just waiting. What about a documentary about a young athlete who is parlaying MMA and pro wrestling together and we're seeing so much crossover these days now with professional wrestling and MMA on yeah. all different levels. You yeah. ever thought of delving into something like that, whether it be after your own life or after someone else's? You know, I've, I've not thought about that. Um, I think I'm kind of too much in the middle, in the thick of my life right now. Maybe as some years go by and I, uh, obtain some success in either one, then I could reflect back and be like, you know what, I'm going to write about that. But not, not yet. I got to keep creating the memories first. And what memories you're creating? Most recently, you've been involved with Professional Fighters League, PFL, MMA, and they had this new eight-week series, the PFL Challenger Series. You competed in week three. And the goal was to get a PFL contract. Yes. You won in week three. You didn't get the contract. It was judges voting, fans voting, a mix of things. It was a very successful PFL Challenger series. But they you were able well. to showcase yourself. And you won. And they called you back for the last event in week eight. And you won again. What was that experience like for you? And how did you get that opportunity? Gosh, this had to have been the most challenging event in my life, not just for the fighting or the training, but in mentally and emotionally. Um, it definitely showed me that I can persevere. So I had my last amateur fight about a year ago, and in that fight, I tore my rotator cuff. So I ended up getting surgery um, in the summertime. I'd been out all year, basically not not using that arm, unable to train hard. When I went back to training last fall, I hurt my other shoulder. Um, I didn't know why, how, I didn't know how or why. It's actually taken three months to figure out. Only, only a couple weeks ago did we have a major breakthrough and figure out what was going on and how to pinpoint how to fix it. So, okay, so that was last fall when I realized my shoulder, my other shoulder was crap. And I said, maybe I should go to Belize for a week and see if it gets better. Well, it was okay. I did band work and I rehabbed it and it felt good. And then I was on a boat just after swimming with some sharks and I got a notification from my email. I'm like, how am I even getting service right here in the middle of the ocean? And it was PFL. And they said they want me to be in their challenger series. And from what I understood, that was a lot like another company's contender series where, you know, they are, ju they're just looking for upcoming talent. I, I was, I was beside myself. Like I was on this amazing boat with other tourists and looking at sharks and beautiful fish in the ocean in Belize. And I get the best news I've had is like the biggest news for me because I knew I wanted to go pro soon, but I just was waiting for my shoulders to well get well. And I teared up, of course, I got back to the States and I went to training and my shoulder went right back to the pain and problems that it had before. Um, and it was, I was just freaking out. I was like, I can't miss this opportunity. I, I, if I have one arm, I'm just going to have to do it. I just have to do it. Um, and so I just worked the best I could. I could, I had no range of motion. I couldn't lift my arm over 90 degrees. And then I sprained my ankle cause I was trying to protect it. And I had this sprained ankle like a couple weeks before that. And not only that, but in a sparring round, um, I may or may not have gotten head kicked so hard that I was um, knocked out for a minute and a half. So 
after something like that, pretty much you just are going to throw in the towel and <clears throat> say, well, maybe this is the universe telling me that this isn't what I should be doing. And I got to listen to it because I was also already wondering if I should continue on with the shape my body was in. Um, and then that kind of confirmed maybe I shouldn't. But for some reason, I, I talked to the doctor and we went through a whole sheet of protocols and I went and passed all these his little tests uh, every other day I would go in and see him and I seemed fine. And something in my gut just told me to keep going, to not give up and just to do it. And I knew my opponent and I knew what her skills were, which was judo, high level judo. She wasn't a striker. So I didn't feel like I could get like my head rocked and something just told me to do it. And I said, okay, I'm going to do it. I can hardly walk. I couldn't train the last two weeks before the fight because of uh, everything um, so I did some, some cardio and that's about it. But I went deep, deep, deep into my practice that I'd been, been doing for the last couple of years, regularly, daily, but I went really deep into my visualization and meditation and breath work and just trying to heal my body from the inside out. And I said, I'm going to knock this girl out in the first round so I could get it over with. And I did. <laughs> and, and that the scariest thing about the whole fight was that with all this practice and visualization that I knew worked because all of my mentors and other spiritual leaders that I listened to, they, this is what they tell you to do. And it works. My biggest fear was that it wasn't going to work, but it worked exactly how I saw it. Exactly. So that's tried and tested. That was huge for me. Basically, that's a huge lesson in perseverance and mental toughness. Mm -hmm. And once you got past that, did your belief in the mental side of it even strengthen itself more? Even more. Like I had trust in it before and I do trust timing and I do trust that things happen for you when you put out effort. And I do believe in reciprocated energy and karma, you know, all the woo woo stuff that they call, but, um, this was just like, it was like magic. And then my friend said, it is magic. Cause all magic is, is energy. So that's what happens. Um, but yeah, it's solidified. And therefore I used it again with this other fight. And, um, I wasn't as clear because I wasn't as determined, uh, cause my body started feeling better. So the my physical therapist and I had the breakthroughs and my body just started feeling better and my, uh, my range of motion started coming back and I still need to work on the strength. But I, I, I think the first fight was a little more desperate. I don't want to say that I made it happen out of despair, but I was just really, I had no other choice, but to, to utilize that practice. But even though I utilized it for this fight, I wasn't as strong. I wasn't as disciplined with it. And, but it kind of, so when I visualized that fight, this last fight, it was, I knew I'd win, but it was a little foggy. And that's how the fight kind of went. <laughs> well, you went 2-0. and oh, And I'm curious, for your MMA career, what's the next step for you now? You know, I would love to drop a weight class to 145 and fight for UFC. That'd be ideal um, just because that's what everybody wants. You know, I want to shoot, shoot for the stars. And you're in Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> and so many of my teammates fight for UFC. We used to go over to the Performance Institute and train there on their mats just as a team. And a lot of them go there just to use the sauna and the cold pool. So it, it's, it's right at my fingertips. Well, as far as PFL MMA goes, were you able to meet or talk to Kayla Harrison or Julia Budd or anyone like that? And what do you know about the talent in PFL and your thoughts of the women's division there? Well, I think there are a lot of talented 155ers. I don't know why other promotions aren't keeping the 45 and 55 I think when they if they build it, the women will come. I, I don't know how they can overlook that these women are talented. I don't understand how they can act like there's not larger women. Like, I just don't get it. It seems so old-fashioned to me. Um, and I, 
didn't get to know. That's fine. Uh, um, I didn't know about a lot of the fighters until I got the contract for the PFL or until I got the first fight for the PFL. And um, then I started looking up and looking into them. Obviously, we know of Kayla. So uh, I looked her up and then a couple of former PFL fighters started training at my gym. And I looked them up and they're there. Then there's there's also speculation that when I got the PFL fight, there may have been some sense of threat from these other fighters. So I got, I, I got a little attitude and maybe that's why I got, um, I got sparred very hard two weeks before my fight. Speculation. It goes with the territory. Yeah. Whether it's MMA or even pro wrestling. And I want to, I want to delve into the pro wrestling. So from the MMA, I want to ask this. You did tell me a lot about it, but I still want to get it from you because a lot of the mental game. Yes. Who is Jeslyn Michelle, the MMA fighter? Who? Well, I, I made this decision the morning of this last fight because I had Roxy Modafferi corner me. And she was, I was like, listen, the morning of the fight, if you guys could just, you could go get breakfast or go away for an hour. Cause I have this morning routine, this ritual, I do Qigong, I do breath work and then do meditation. And like, you can sit around, but I'll be, be doing weird chants and stuff. And, and then I wanted to explain to her that I'm like, well, I'm not trying to do this for the fight. I'm doing this cause this is my practice. And then that was the first time I admitted it to myself. Whereas before I was like, um, well, this is tried and tested and told to me that this works. So I'm going to try to utilize it on my fights. But I had this revelation where this isn't just for my fights. This is who I am. This is what I do now. And so that's fairly new because Jesslyn Michelle, the fighter was just like, Hey, I'm a, I'm a small town girl. I was a stripper for a while here and there. And all of a sudden I'm an MMA fighter that I never had a never in my life. Would I even think that that would have been an option? Um, and we'll just see where this goes, but that's not how I think anymore. I know where it's going to go. I want to be successful with it. And I want to be able to share my story about what I've learned and what I have learned with my body in these last two fights this year was that stored trauma can really affect you so chronic pain if it's you know not acute and goes away chronic pain is actually emotional it's exactly tied to emotions and the more i read up on it the more research has proven it so my jessica michelle the fighter is trying to just understand and help teach about your mind body connection and your relationship with it we always think about staying positive and if you're positive and being able to not stress yourself out as much, because when you put stress mentally, you're hurting your body physically. So yes. some of that, I, some of that I understand. It's very interesting. I want to also know who is Jeslyn Michelle, the pro wrestler? <laughs> I will say <clears throat> when I started pro wrestling in 2016, a uh, training in 2014, I had no idea. I had no idea what this was about, who I was, who I was going to be, what was my character. They say in pro wrestling, you just magnify who you are and like up the ante. I'm like, well, who am I? I don't even know. <clears throat> and so I started trying to be this ethereal, earthy type of character, feminine, uh, but tough. And then I felt like I was trying too hard because I was trying to not be sexy because I wanted my talent to speak for itself and not the sex appeal. But where I where I left off with pro wrestling is um, I like my femininity and I like being sensual and I like the woman power that we have. So with pro wrestling and that character, I was able to build that up. But like, why can't you do that in fighting? Why can't I be that all the time? So it's we're, we're well. It's an interesting dynamic too, because with fighting, you're going out there to beat up your opponent and to win. And in pro yes. wrestling, it's more about entertainment and also it's physical, of course. 
but yeah. you're more or less trying to protect your opponent, but make it look good. So right. it looks like you're trying to hurt that person, beat them up and win. Yeah. That interesting dynamic of going back and forth like that. Was that a challenge for you or no? It was, it very much was, especially when I was still training pro wrestling and training MMA. Um, I think it was easier for wrestling because I, um, wasn't I wasn't going to go hard like I do in MMA and accidentally hurt someone. But in MMA, I will pull my punch or slap my thigh when I kick just for fun. I'm like, ah, this is real fighting. I can't. I got to do that or just be dramatic. You know, I, you know, you don't want your opponent to see the pain on your face. Whereas in pro wrestling, you want the whole audience to see the pain on your face. So it was challenging, but uh, probably since the pandemic, since 2020, the pro wrestling's just faded away and now I'm full on MMA mode. Do you miss the pro wrestling? I miss what pro wrestling brought to me. I was able to travel the world and do live shows with all kinds of neat characters. It's very much a carny scene, if that makes sense. Like you'd be surprised. It's it's like it's like a traveling circus act. So that that was fun. Barnum and Bailey. Yes, of course. It's a traveling <laughs> circus. Yeah. Were there some wrestlers who you can name who you really enjoyed working with? Um, yeah. Gosh, well, female wise, I loved I loved having matches with Mia, Mia Yim. She went to WWE for a short bit. But she she liked Mia to did a go lot of indies in Florida. Oh yeah. Yeah, she did. So we had good matches and she, and I liked it because she was tough. Like for the most part, a lot of people that get into pro wrestling aren't necessarily athletes or athletic. Um, they're, you know, it brings a different interest of people. Um, so a lot of the girls aren't necessarily very athletic and, uh, Mia is, and she's not worried if she's going to get a little extra heat or a little extra strength in my elbow you know like i can hurt her and she's not going to get hurt basically um i came up with shotzi and i saw her from her early days another we california actually, girl yeah northern we actually um did a vampire movie together before either of us started wrestling blood drive you can look it up shotzi's the best oh my she's god and that told the scream thing and just her look and come and now well not now anymore but she used to come out in a little tank an army she's tank the, <laughs> oh yeah i think she still does and what's cool about shotzi is that's who she is like that's her all the time like she's never compromised who she is she's always been over the top well jesslyn if i'm not mistaken i think she had some acting and dramatic background as well like you yeah. right and that's like i said where i met her on set of a vamp the vampire movie I'll send you a link. Please do. It's so interesting to hear the journeys. Now, I'll ask you a couple more questions. We'll wrap this up. Thank you so much for your time. I, sure I do want to give a shout out to another pro wrestler, Thunder Rosa. She was my first debut uh, match, and she's gone along and done some wonderful things. She works for AEW now, and she's a good Thunder friend. Thunder Rosa is now yeah. the AEW Women's Champion. Yeah, yeah, that's right. She has I'm a proud of her. match coming up with Nyla Rose coming up, and she just – had beaten Britt Baker, tremendous wow. series of matches they've had, and and Thunder Rosa finally won the title. So it was you're really a big cool. pro wrestling fan. Oh, I what I do pro MMA and pro wrestling, but my background is more pro wrestling than MMA. So I do know a lot with the pro wow. wrestling. So, like you mentioned, the names you mentioned, all I've interviewed all three of them actually. So yeah, very no way. and all three are very tough. Yes, mentally but and physically. Yeah. That, that's probably why they're my top three favorites. <laughs> I would think so too. It's just so interesting. And, and it's just the journeys are so interesting too, like yeah. your journey. And I've got to ask you about the stilt walker stuff. So what is that all about? <laughs> so uh, during the snowboarding days and the theater. Am and I acting in the circus with the, with the guy on the stilts, the tall guy on the stilts? <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking the circus. So they used to have the guy on the stilts. He would be tall in the air and he'd be on the walking <laughs> on the stilts. 
No, you know what? The, just like everything else, even fighting. Okay, let me let me just give you this tidbit. When I was training pro wrestling, um, I said, well, maybe I should learn something legitimate to um, make my pro wrestling look more real. So I stumbled in on a jujitsu class down the street from where I was living. I fell in love when these girls were just choking me out left and right. I was like, how is this happening? I'm like a big, strong girl, and these tiny girls are choking me. So I was hooked. After about a year of jujitsu, they said, do you want to fight? And I said, no, I'm a pro wrestler. I don't really want to get hit. I said, you know what? Maybe I should try a fight just to feel what it feels like. So I could take that to pro wrestling and, you know, be more believable, like really feel that. And after that first fight, the most scared I've ever been leading up to it, which ended up being the most boring fight in the world for King of the Cage. um, I was hooked on that adrenaline, like the fear. Like that was the first time I truly felt fear. And the girl was so non-threatening. She was she just laid down and let me armbar her. You, the fear but, was uh, all mental. The fear was all in your mind, not knowing what yeah. to expect. The anticipation had nothing to do with the opponent. It was the situation. Right. right. And I loved it. I like being scared. I think, I think that's must be the issue. <laughs> but, um, so that was just all kind of accidental. And then now, now look where I am. Like I had no idea. So this, I'm just trying to go with the flow of the river of life, you know? So, so the still walking came when I took myself to aerial school in Boulder, Colorado. I wanted to learn to do the silks and the trapeze because I always wanted to be in the circus. <laughs> this was before pro wrestling. And then, um, yeah, I, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a clown. I wanted to grow up to be a clown. That's For you, it wasn't weird. Cirque de Soleil. It was more the traditional circus? Traditional, Yeah. I just think that the traveling and the performing for different audiences, I just always found that lifestyle fascinating. So anyway, I took myself to the circus school, did a bunch of their classes, and they're like, oh, there's a still walking class at this hour, and you have it free. And I'm like, all right, I'll try it. Just tried it. It was easy. And then it was simple to make the stilts, and I just just got known to do still. So I got booked for um, parades and birthday parties and it was, it's been fun. Now I'm thinking, and tell me if I'm right or wrong. Now I'm thinking, so you're on those big long stilts and you're walking on stilts. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. So my question, my follow-up to that is, did you ever think of entering the ring walking on stilts? <laughs> Yes, I have thought of entering the ring walking on stilts, and I just couldn't figure out a way to make them easily removable. But I think it'd be, I think I could do it now with my drywall stilts. That would be the best. Yeah. You know what? I'll do that just for you, my next <laughs> one. Well, whether it's an MMA or hopefully in pro wrestling, if you ever do any more pro wrestling matches, I mean, that would just go so big so huge in pro wrestling and it would be you cool think so? me too. but i think the pro wrestling it would just really blow up if you come you out on stilts. <laughs> all oh, right I, I just think that's so cool well listen i'll let you go i i took up a lot of your time i appreciate oh, it i'm honored I have, I have to ask on the way out who are your dogs uh-oh oh they're over there come here benny Come on. Oh, they're just sniffing around. One's named Bungle and the other's Tita. And they're going to be 13 years old this year. What kind so, of dogs? One is a chow mix. Everyone thinks she's a corgi, but her mom was a beautiful red chow chow and her dad was a little terrier chewini mutt. Come here. I don't know if you could see him, but yeah, they're over there. I can't see them, but that's okay. I know you have your dogs out. You're outside. It's really cool. Now, they're Tessa, my best as we friend. Up, like... As we wrap up, did I pick the right shirt today? I hope so. I guess. Dodgers. My, Dodgers. My uncle would say shirt. so. Yes. <laughs> my mom would say so. Yes. Yes, you'd say so. I didn't know if you were a Dodgers fan or a sports fan growing up. You know, I love, I love. Watching sports, but I don't follow. I can't follow it. You like playing sports, not really watching, not really watching it. it. Correct. Correct. I, I mean, I've turned my television on two times this year. 
Well, listen, give us your social media for fans and uh, anything else that might be coming up for you. Sure. Um, one of the, one of my managers asked me if I'd be interested in Bellator and uh, we'll see what goes on with that. But right now I just want to get my body back to hundred percent and get back to strength. I don't have that strength in my upper body yet. And <clears throat> my social media, I probably really only use Instagram. I have Twitter. I have Facebook. I have whatever else. But I really only use my Instagram, which is my pro wrestling handle, Body Slamming Queen 333. But in my last fight, when I got taken down with a beautiful double leg, someone yelled, Body Slamming Peasant! <laughs> hey, but you know what? That's a good thing because you know that they know you. Yeah. Yeah. So That's you true. take a negative and make it a positive. It was hilarious. I because I, I didn't hear it at the time, but I heard it on the video. So I laughed. <laughs> the body slam queen. Oh, then body slam peasant. That's all right. I'll be back. The body slam queen will be back on top. That's it right. So, it is so cool. Listen. From hiking, trailing in the mountains, to yes. silt walking, to pro wrestling, to MMA, to swimming with the sharks. Travel. Travel with the sharks. Having the mental capacity, the yoga, and very spiritual in a, in a mental sense. What a multi-talented, interesting person you are. Continue huh? your success with everything. And I hope we can do this again. I have more questions I'd love to ask. I have my, my whole sheet. We only did one page. Got a whole nother page. <laughs> wow. Well, I got all the answers to those questions. So anytime yes. you let me know. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You have a great day.